I'm Kyle. I'm Josh. And that's Mom and Dad. We are the Royer family. Welcome back to the Knife Studio. In this brand new series, we're gonna make a frame handle for this massive, massive double-edged Bowie knife. It's gonna have mother of pearl inserts on the sides and it's gonna be really complicated and it's gonna put me to the ultimate test to be able to make it through this build. The first thing we need to do with our prepared blade is work on the guard. With most of my knives, I like to start on the guard when it comes to the handle and then work my way back. For the guard, we're gonna use some 1018 mild steel that's 5 eighths of an inch thick. Went ahead and traced over my guard real roughly and cut out a piece of paper and marked it out on my anvil with Sharpie. That way, as I'm forging this, I can hold it over the mark on my anvil and kind of rough it in and get it close to what this paper template is. To start off with, Kyle's going to heat up his guard in the forge. Normally, he would use the torch, but Dad already had the forge hot from making Damascus. I'm done forging the guard to shape. <laughs> shape. I'm done forging the guard to shape. If it's still the, sh the proper shape after dropping, got it heated up. We're gonna just let it cool down kind of slowly in the electric kiln over here. I don't have the kiln on or anything. I just wanna let it cool down a little bit slower than it would out in the open air. Now that the guard is cooled down, we can go ahead and start shaping it. There's a lot of extra material here. The stock I started with was super thick. Our template fits nicely within the bounds of the piece, so I think we're good to go. I'm gonna take it over to the surface grinder and start grinding away this main flat area here and get it down to the right thickness. Right now it's uh, a little over a half inch thick still, and we need to grind it down to like 300 thousandths or so. Once Kyle is done grinding the scales, he takes it to the mill to get that much desired flat surface. Now we want to start working on the quillions, these big lugs on the ends. We need to grind those down quite a bit so I have a rough layout put on here. And I've also got my jerry-rigged uh, hillbilly horizontal grinder set up over here. It's not really horizontal, but at least I have a, a rest to put it against. Since the, the sides of this are nice and square, I can hold it squarely against this rest and be able to come in here with the round wheel and clean up the uh, undersides of the guard. Kyle takes the guard back to the sketch, fine-tuning the profile. I've got the inside curves of the guard shaped. 
Now we can get rid of my hillbilly horizontal jig and use the regular flat platen to grind around the outside profile of the guard. When Kyle needs to grind a lot of material and fast, he uses the handle of a wrench to give him more leverage. I'm done profiling the guard. The main thing that I like to get profiled before I do the guard fitting is get the actual shape, looking at the guard this way, get all that stuff shaped. Next thing we need to do is get a nice, tight, perfect fit with the guard right up against the Ricasso. Once the bulk of the material is milled away, Kyle will use files to fine tune the guard. So that was my first cycle of hammering the guard on and I can already tell there's a problem here. I was a little worried the quarter inch mill bit was gonna be a little too large because the tang was only a couple of a thousandths over one quarter of an inch. And sometimes those, those mill bits can wobble a little bit, especially in my grizzly mill. Because of that, I have a little bit of a gap on the sides of the guard fit up area. So we're gonna have to do some special stuff that I, uh, I don't like doing in order to fix that. If you hammer on the side of your guard, it will fit tighter on the tang of your knife. That's looking much better. I think I still have a little bit of a problem spot, so I'll have to smash down a little bit more. You can see where the grinder's hitting right here, the, the metal that kind of got mushroomed out right along the edges. I'm just gonna try to lightly flatten this back out before we hammer it back on the uh, blade. And now for a word from our sponsor, us. Over the years, I've gotten many requests from people asking how to begin making knives and what to do once they've made their first or second one. So my family and I have put together this course for people who wanna begin making knives or for someone who's already dabbled around with it and done a couple, but they wanna advance their skills. So much of what I've learned over the past 16 years has been poured into this course to help the beginner bladesmith get into knives and enjoy it, you can make a beautiful, clean, elegant knife with very simple tools like a Dremel tool, files, a vise, a small forge, be it propane, or we'll also make a homemade charcoal forge. I'm gonna take you through the entire process of making a hand-forged, clean and elegant everyday carry knife. Not only will this course help you out as a beginner, but it'll also lay the foundation for the rest of your knife making journey. The things I do and teach and the knowledge I share in this course will apply to any project you do in the future. No matter where your knife making journey takes you, having a good foundation to build a clean, elegant and simple knife will benefit you through the rest of your journey. Use coupon code YouTube for 20% off, link in the description. I was able to get rid of that gap on the sides of the guard where it fits up against the Ricasso. Now that I've gotten rid of that mistake from using too large of an end mill bit, we can finally move on to the rest of my guard fitting as per normal. Every one out of four knives I make normally ends up having some kind of little mistake where I have to bash on the guard like that. So I wanted to show it to you guys in case you end up having a problem with your guard fit 
uh, can really help you out. You don't have to necessarily scrap your guard and start over. You can get a couple of second chances at it sometimes uh, if you can smash the sides of the metal in. So we've already started to leave a little bit of a mark from the Ricasso. Kind of goes right across there and there's another one on the bottom side. So now that we have those marks, I can do a little bit of filing right here because it's a little too tight now after hammering on it. I didn't mention it earlier, but I like to mill some of that out first because it gets rid of the bulk of the material and then we can come into the corners and fine tune it with the high speed dental burr and the microscope. I used a really tiny end mill bit to cut a little bit of a relief and hog out the bulk of that material. That way there'll be less to do with the high speed dental burr. Now I'm just gonna cover everything with Sharpie. We're gonna smash it on the knife again and it should leave a little bit of an outline where we can uh, see what we need to remove so we can keep getting that fit over the Ricasso a little bit further more and more each time. Rotating at about 320,000 RPM, Kyle will remove the perfect amount of material with his GRS setup. I'm very happy with the guard fit. It's super tight, there's no gaps anywhere. It's about as good as I could ask for. Sometimes these guard fits can have a tendency of being angled a little bit like this, and we really don't want that, because if you start doing that as we build the rest of the handle off of the guard, it can kind of make the rest of your handle sometimes be angled a little bit too. So I was able to take this small square and just hold it on the spine of the blade, and bring it down to the guard and get it there nice and square. The guard fits on pretty tight and you gotta use a hammer to get it off and you have to clamp the blade in the vise and use that special tool to hammer the guard on. But here's how you take it off. The guard comes off of there and it comes off. The guard comes off. <laughs> the guard's removable. I used the high speed dental burr to remove the material around the border and then I kept hammering it on to leave a new fresh mark and then I'd go back to the dental burr and keep doing that process over and over again. Once the Ricasso started hitting these flat areas, then I knew we were pretty much there and we had about 10 thousandths of an inch where the guard fit over the Ricasso. The next piece to work on is the front spacer. This knife is gonna have a combination of blued fittings with gold inlay and Damascus fittings. So the guard's gonna be blued and then we'll have a Damascus front spacer. The frame will be Damascus, except for the outside part of the frame handle, that'll be blued, and then the pommel will be Damascus, and the pommel nut will be blued. All the pieces have been normalized, so they're ready to go for shaping and stuff like that, and they're pretty soft right now. So I'm gonna start grinding on this piece, get it flattened up, get it cleaned up, get all this forge scale off of here, and then we'll start milling out the slot the same as we did on the guard. Make it flat is something Kyle always says. That's certainly true when it comes to making the beginnings of a spacer. Once again, I made a little bit of a mistake here with the front spacer. I should have put my guard on and then drawn a line behind where my guard stops. And instead of doing that, 
I just kind of estimated that my front spacer would go up to this first little ledge here, but I was completely off and the front spacer actually stopped before that ledge. So once again, I made the, uh, <laughs> the fit a little loose on the front spacer. So what I'm gonna do is just lightly smash on the sides ever so slightly and it'll get it fitting nice and tight against the sides. And then to fix the length of the groove, I think I'm just gonna go in with the, uh, the TIG welder and put a little tiny bit of weld on the inside. I think that's gonna work out really well. I lightly hit on the sides of the front spacer a little bit because I just needed to close that up ever so slightly. can't hammer this on yet because we need to cut some off of the bottom part of it because right now it's going to hit on this radius of the guard and it's not going to go all the way to where it needs to. ahead and shaped the front spacer or rather I profiled the top and bottom of it. I normally like to do that before I move on to working with the tang and everything. That way I know where to get all this frame and handle lined up properly with the blade. That's ready to go. We've got a nice tight fit. I can't even pull it off by hand. You got to tap on the tang a little bit to get it off, which is exactly the way I wanted it. In the next video, we're gonna move on from the front spacer and start working on the rest of the handle components like the frame and pommel and the sides of the frame and handle scales and all that fun stuff. I will see you in the next video. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye.